A Married Man, directed by William Higgins and starring Jack Wrangler, was the director's debut into the maddening world of gay erotic cinema. The film was so wrought with many location issues, technical glitches, and demanding stars that it led to Higgins calling it quits before the movie was released. In this episode, we're going to take a look at A Married Man, a classic gay porn film by a director who almost left the business before the film was seen by a savvy theater owner and was given a proper, successful release. This is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Aika Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Before we continue, please don't forget that you can help this channel and this audiovisual podcast by clicking the subscribe button, clicking the like button, and selecting the bell icon so you can be notified every time I publish a new video. Also, leave a comment and tell me what you think. In 1978, William Higgins set out for San Francisco, but only got as far as Los Angeles. There, Higgins headed for Hollywood, where he was told there was a gay area of town. As he drove down Santa Monica Boulevard and began to see hustlers hitchhiking, he knew he was at the right place. At the French Market, a popular restaurant for gay men in West Hollywood, Higgins met a man and told him he'd specifically come out to California to make a gay porn film. The man, going by the name of Edward Higgins, ended up helping Higgins find his cast as well as use of his apartment for the shoot. This is where Higgins would get his stage name, copying Joe Gage and his business partner, who went by the Gage Brothers. When you watch the film, the first thing that attacks your senses is the theme song. That would be Jack Wrangler, singing the theme song of the film. Higgins met Jack Wrangler, who at the time was already a star, after finding his manager. The two hit it off at the start, but during production there was tension between the star the director, who is credited to be Steve Scott, and Higgins. Higgins attributes this to Wrangler wanting to sing the theme song of the film. Higgins reluctantly agreed and paid for three hours of studio time, and Wrangler recorded the track Smoggy City. To make matters worse, Wrangler refused to allow the movie to be released if it didn't include the song. The filming of A Married Man went badly in so many ways. First and foremost, nobody knew how to make a movie. None of the three principals got along, and they all disagreed on shooting, performance, and editing. And add to the fact that, yeah, Higgins had an interest in photography in high school, but he had virtually no previous experience in photography or filming. And add to all of this that Higgins, not having that much sexual experience himself, had never seen two guys have sex up close until directing A Married Man. A Married Man was shot over the course of 24 hours. The film's location had been scouted by Higgins and the cast four or five times before the shoot. It was a mansion in the Hollywood Hills that belonged to a man who sold it to a Russian princess who was set to own it in a couple of days. The day of the shoot, the mansion was seized by U.S. Marshals after the owner declared bankruptcy. After shooting a bit of the first scene, Higgins and his crew were told to leave. Luckily, they were able to shoot the rest of the movie in Ed Higgins' apartment. A Married Man is a story about a gardener for a wealthy couple who is caught by his employer having sex with a hitchhiker friend, Chuck. What is going on here? Oh, uh, do you live here too? Live here? I own the place. What is going on here? Before she fires him, her gardener, in true snitch form, tells her about her husband's gay infidelities with the butler and the chauffeur. Like what? There's been some mighty strange things happening since you've been away. I don't understand. I'm really, I really don't understand. Through a series of flashbacks, we too can partake in the story. If you're lying to me, you're fired. The wife is in disbelief when she finds out everything she was told is true, and even her father tried to hide it from her. There really isn't much meat to this film, although I can't knock it. But a Joe Gage film, it is not. In between the sex scenes, Higgins does his best at stylistic shots. The film overall does not look bad considering time and what inevitably happened in post. After a grueling shoot, Higgins would now learn the pains of post-production and there were a lot of them. Higgins took the last of his money and sent the film to be processed. 
It was at the lab that he would learn that the film was loaded into the camera backwards. After some back and forth with the technician, Higgins was able to convince him to process the film. Meanwhile, through another connection he had made in L.A., Higgins was able to score a meeting with the owner of a gay theater in Philadelphia who was interested in financing the film's release. Higgins arranged for his potential financier to see the film. In the middle of the screening, the producer got up and walked out, saying, I don't know who shot this piece of shit, but clearly they don't know anything about making a porno movie. After that gut-punching experience, Higgins persisted and was able to by chance meet another investor who gave him $5,000 to finish the film. Higgins took the money and took the film to a movie doctor to fix a slew of technical mistakes. Once the film was finished, Higgins met with the owner of the Adonis Theater who refused to show the film because he felt Jack Wrangler was overexposed. Higgins did have luck in New York, striking a deal with the 55th Street Playhouse, where a married man would have a theatrical release and become a moderate success. Monroe Beeler, who owned the Century Theater in California, booked the film and took an interest in Higgins as a director. From that point on, things got a little easier for Higgins, and it was the start of his career. A Married Man had its haters when it was released. From theater owners to producers to the filmmakers themselves. Ed Higgins had such a horrible time making the film that William Higgins was able to purchase his part of the rights with a big TV he brought with him from Texas. Steve Scott, the man who directed the film, and William Higgins fractured their friendship during the making of this film and would eventually fall out years later. A Married Man was a learning lesson mostly for Higgins, who learned... It isn't easy to say you can make a better porn film than the ones out there without a swift dose of reality. All in all, A Married Man is a seminal film in gay erotic history today and is well regarded among its fans. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I'm your host, Aike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn is available on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on X, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram. And if you like what you're watching or listening to and want to be a part of the creative process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn, where you can help support this audiovisual podcast and YouTube channel, and I can continue making content like you've just enjoyed. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Cheers. (laughs) 